morning, everybody. Usair here, back again with another video. Today, I want to discuss a very important topic for the start founders, co-founders. Now, I know you're thinking, I don't even know who I'm going to bring on board. Like, it's just an important part of actually building a company. Now, where do I start? And this video is exactly about that and how I dealt with it. Finding a co-founder, as they always say in this industry, and you must have already heard, is finding a spouse. It's, it's actually as good as finding or getting married to somebody because you're not entirely sure how the relationship is going to turn out to be once you do actually decide to go with somebody. Now, I'm being very vague because I want to be very generic on what is expected of them because the whole idea about startup rules is the mindset. Mindset helps you foresee any circumstances that can actually have an effect on you while it happens. So what do you do? You foresee it. Prepare your mindset so you can overcome that situation. And that's exactly how a startup founder, at least in my experience, stay ahead of every other circumstantial decisions that you have to make. So you will definitely and most likely, and you should, because it's a healthier healthier way to kind of improve your relationship is that you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems with whoever you choose and a co-founder is never going to be perfect. What that you should really focus on is the skill tree. Figuring out what you are not good at is probably more important in figuring out what they are not probably good at. Because what makes you understand about yourself better helps you choose your co-founder better. So what better way to kind of figure out what your skills are lacking and go after somebody that is good in that specific skill set because again let's be honest i mean we all co-founders really think that we got all of it covered of course we do i mean we're in this position for that exact same reason because we think we have everything covered now if you're thinking of starting a company while you may be fine by yourself which in all fairness, go ahead. Do it for about a year because if you can't pay somebody, the equity discussion goes a little complicated, which I will discuss in the next video. But try to start delegating because that's the second biggest thing is co-founding a team while building it, trying to choose. You should also be aware that you can delegate some of the work to your co-founders and trust them to do it because they are better at what they do than you and that's as a matter of fact as a co-founder there's always this ego where i know it all and that's fine and that is how most of the founders are but the better founders are the ones that accept that there are other people out there that can do a better job at this specific skill let me trust that process and let them do it and that's exactly how you should be thinking while you choose a co-founder is you figure out your skill set and make sure that person compliments you. Now, the second skill set is is the, the trustworthy. Is it somebody referred within your network? Is it somebody that you could potentially have a discussion, have a go for a drink? Things that you could do outside. It's not just a relationship of knowing the person within the startup scene. It is also learning about them who they are as people likes dislikes like i said it's 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 a marriage situation so you have to take that step where you understand that hey i need to really invest in understanding the person more than how much are they going to help the startup <clears throat> because while that might be something that you should always prioritize is as important as also figuring out who they are as people because you become you become a team a, a, a duel perhaps as a start and then you start building a bigger team so it becomes extremely important that complement each other obviously and are supporting each other in every task and making decisions together so find somebody that you can work with more than just a startup and you are a lot more transparent now the third thing that i would definitely say uh, doesn't matter how how big the team becomes <clears throat> to a certain certain boundaries of course is transparency. Finding a co-founder means the 
that you are as transparent to them as you are to yourself. Now you might want to lie to yourself, which is, I don't know if you really want to do in the Star world because you really, if you're going to bullshit yourself, you're going to be lying to yourself. It's not going to take you too far, but being transparent helps you keep things in focus. As you grow the team with the co-founding team, with that specific person, focus is very, very essential. And the reason is two minds, two different thought processes, focus becomes a priority. And that focus means transparency. So keeping the transparency with your co-founders helps build the team overall as you progressively move forward. So keep things transparent with your co-founders while you engage with them, just so that the honesty stays upfront and they understand that you mean good and, and and one of the most important things is discuss about expectation i don't mean equity which i think a lot of people think it is expectation which is the fourth most important thing is how dedicated they are to this idea how dedicated are they to solve the problem because every person has a passion towards certain areas that they might not know of but when you go and spark that does that really stick with them do they really think that this is a problem that they also want to solve as much as you do because it doesn't matter if they're technical uh, it doesn't matter if they're designers co-founders in general so make sure they align in execution align in the vision align in what they want to achieve out of this because those things can be a break it or make it and the last thing i want to say is knowing while choosing the co-founder is what stage of their life they are at because that becomes really important how you hold your conversation with them and where they are in part of their life also dictates how they would deal in future with your startup so as, as important it is to find a co-founder, this is, you're talking about the next two to three, four years, maybe five, max 10 years, but you know, keeping good faith, a lot of co-founders and founders of companies have grown with the companies. That doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't find somebody older or younger, but you have to make sure that you discuss. Because as a co-founder, you're taking certain responsibilities and people need to understand that. It is not just a job where you're, you're doing what you're told to be done. You're actually bringing ideas and executing and sh and basically sharing a sense of purpose. So make sure you understand if they're in school, for example, are they okay with getting on full-time when they're done their school? Or are they gonna be extremely busy during the exam time and they would pay no attention what's going on at your startup if you have customers if it just becomes more important or if they are at the peak of starting a family would they be would their focus and priorities change which is most likely going to happen but can they manage it emotional stability and their iq is tested around that time of figuring out where they are in their life and, and and really just one more thing that i wanted to add really have that honest conversation with them make sure that you you really tell them what you're trying to achieve versus what you expect and holding that this level of discussion from the very get-go helps you keep that conversation going because I'm telling you this is not the first conversation that you will do this will be an ongoing thing till you sell the company or dissolve the company so it's really up to you all how you figure out your relationship with your co-founders and and there's tons of more things that I would have left to share with you on on what to look at when it comes to co-founding team and how do you build a team basically i have short clips on tiktok and instagram make sure you give a like and comment below if i've kind of given you an idea of how to start and uh like i said these videos are are, are a compilation of my experience and thought processes but every scenario is different every scenario takes bits and pieces of experiences and every founder has different experiences on how they founded their co-founding team so it's never it's never the perfect way of finding co-founding team, but keeping these five to six things in mind helps you make your own judgments. In the end, keep your mindset sharp, keep your mindset at startup rules, and stay true to yourself. Cheers.